Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Stefan Ash and today I have a comparison video for my two favorite games, Final Fantasy XIV and Elder Scrolls Online. I've always wanted to make a comparison guide for these games as I play these games relatively regularly and I just wanted to share some of the major differences that I see between these two games as I do consider them on the opposite spectrum. Both of these games have generated a lot of conversation lately as I've been on the interwebs because they both have big expansion and story changes coming to them in 2021. With this, there have been a lot of people who want to get into these MMOs lately and I just wanna provide a guide in order to give them information to make the best possible decision. If you ask me, I say play every MMO. But of course, because MMOs are so extensive, you really kind of have to pick one, maybe two, to put all of your time in. The four major differences that I'll be going over is story progression, battle systems, there is a plane going over my apartment right now, story progressions, battle systems, crafting systems and the microtransaction store. Disclaimer, this is going to be a pretty extensive video, but with that being said, I'm not going to be able to cover every single detail of these four major differences. I want to leave a little there to pique your interest to do more research for yourself when wanting to start these games. I put a lot of effort and time into this video, so if you do like it, please boop that like button down below and subscribe as it really helps my growing YouTube YouTube channel for the YouTube algorithm. And without further ado, let's jump into the world of MMOs. The first section will be story progression. Final Fantasy XIV has a level story locked progression system. Each main story quest requires you to be a certain level before you can undertake that quest. Usually, this is not a problem in Final Fantasy XIV since the main story quests are the main source of experience points for your character and puts you well above the levels you need to play through the story continuously. You will need to get to the end of the story in order to do the end game content. This means even if you grind your character to level 80, which is the current cap, you cannot do the end game content without first completing the relating story quests that unlock that content. There is only one way to go through the main story and is generally advised to play through the main story first before investing time into anything else in the game. The story here is expansive and really good in one continuous story arc. It can sometimes burn you out by just playing story content. There are a few things you can work on in between story like daily roulettes or leveling up crafting and gathering, but focus on completing the story first. The thing I like about this is that once you complete the main story, you never have to do it again. So it is generally advised to not get a story skip potion in order to experience the full extent of the story. ESO story progression is way more varied than Final Fantasy XIV. You are dropped in the game and you have your general introduction tutorial to complete. Once that is done, you can literally complete any expansion, DLC, in any way possible because the story content scales to your character level. This means it doesn't mean if you're level 10 or level 50, you can go ahead and complete any DLC in any order you see fit. This makes it a little difficult because you can accidentally complete a future story and then go back and complete the beginning and it could not make sense in the long run. Unlike Final Fantasy XIV, you do not need to complete the story content in order to do endgame content. It is only tied to your character level and championship point level, which we'll go over later. This means you can have one main character and nine alternative characters and never play through the story again with your alternative characters. Most dungeons unlock once you hit level 50 and the veteran dungeons, which is considered some of the end game content, unlock with your champion point system, which is pretty much end game leveling for characters. There are guides out there on how to do the story in chronological order, which I do recommend to get the full experience and what I did on my playthrough of Elder Scrolls Online. 
My takeaway is that Final Fantasy's main story is more expansive and deep and some would say tedious than ESO's main story, but you only have to do it one time. ESO's story is not as well developed, but you would have to do it multiple times with multiple characters. It took me a few months to complete the Final Fantasy main story quest, but I believe I completed ESO main story quest in just about under a month with a straight shot. Remember, at the making of this video, I have a full-time job, so I am speaking in terms of still having a work life, social life, and playing video games on my days off. The second section I wanted to go over is battle systems. Final Fantasy has what I call a one character system where you can literally have one character and complete everything in the game. This is very attractive for those who are new to MMOs, but can also be a bit overwhelming to have access to everything from the very beginning. Final Fantasy has a job system of around 18 jobs where you can only have access to about nine when you first start. You simply change your main hand and you can switch to that job. Examples being spear for lancer, bow for archer, staff for thaumaturge, and so on and so forth. They work on a well ironed out DPS rotation system. When leveling, you unlock a predetermined set of skills. As you unlock these skills, you add them to your rotation to maximize damage output, ending with a good 18 to 24 skills to manage at any given time. Learning the rotation can be difficult, but once learned, it is easy to commit to muscle memory. The skill rotation system is very punishing when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV. It works on a global cooldown of 2.5 seconds for most jobs in Final Fantasy. This regulates gameplay to be a little slower than ESO as most skills have that cooldown. You cannot spam the same skill over and over as this is not how the game is meant to be played. I will be using the job Black Mage and the job Dancer as my examples here. Please be aware that each job is its own unique experience and rotation system and is not cookie cutter between each job. I will be giving you an oversimplified explanation of their rotation to give you a small idea how it works. First job up is Black Mage. Its DPS rotation works off two phases, fire and ice. The ice phase regenerates your MP and your fire phase is your damaging phase. In simplified terms, your rotation is damage over time with thunder, fire until your MP runs out, and then ice to regenerate your MP, rinse and repeat. If you were to consistently spam an ice spell and did not follow the rotation, you would not have enough DPS really even to play through dungeon content with that being said to irritate the crap out of your teammates. All this being said, they do make it painfully obvious that this is not how the game is supposed to be played. I am hitting home on this because this is the major difference for Final Fantasy 4 and ESO for me. To give you another example, let's jump over to the dancer. Its DPS rotation is very different than the Black Mage as it works off a 50% RNG. Using your base skill will then proc another skill that will be highlighted in a yellow border, which then you would activate that skill because that means that it's going to have a higher damage potency than if you were to click on it without the yellow border. You would just continue this way until you work up to your last skill. There is not really a solid rotation, only guidelines for dancers as you're completely against RNG for using this skill. For dancer, it's more of like just stocking everything up and then unleashing everything on your opponent at one time in a damage phase. This is actually one of the reasons why I really love playing Dancer as it's really fun to just kind of go by the seat of your pants and not really have a specific rotation that you're working on. As you can see with these two examples, each job is very, very unique. One thing I do want to comment on is that Final Fantasy has nothing like dodge rolling, blocking, Everything is about dodging your target's AoEs and perfecting your rotation with your teammates through battle content. 
All in all, when starting out, Final Fantasy battle content can seem a little tedious and not very fun, but once you get to level 80 and you have all these skills at your disposal, it really makes it a beautiful thing to play when you're doing your rotation perfectly and able to unleash all of this damage on your target in a set specific time. Moving over to Elder Scrolls Online, this MMO has a one job per character system where they have six classes to choose from. And once you choose that class, you are stuck with that class for the entirety of the game. This can be seen as a great thing because it allows you to focus on the game itself and fine tuning the class you have chosen. You will need skill points which are finite in the game and acquired by leveling up, collecting sky shards on maps, story quests, and first time dungeon rewards, etc, etc. This can be tedious to do on multiple characters unless you utilize the store where you can purchase the skill points unlocked via maps in order to save time with your other characters. Unfortunately, it does use real money to do this, so it's kind of a give and take. I'll be going over microtransactions for both games later in the video. Instead of having to focus on leveling up other jobs like Final Fantasy XIV, you have skill trees to focus on leveling. Skill trees are leveled up by purchasing a skill with the skill point, putting it onto your bar, which maxes out at 12 skills. When you gain experience, the associated skill tree will level up, eventually maxing out at level 50. Each job has their three main skill trees, but there are countless skill trees in the game, which makes this a very unique experience for MMOs. Some examples being Mage Guild skill tree, Fighter Guild skill tree, Light Armor skill tree, Medium Armor skill tree, and the list goes on and on. There are two ways generally to take a character, and that is either with a stamina build or a magicka build. Magicka builds mostly focus on the magic portion of skills and stats. Stamina focus on melee portions of skills and stats. On your three main character skill trees, most of the skills have a magicka morph and a stamina morph, allowing you to morph the skills into the build you are trying to do. Do not fear trying both of these out as you can respec an endless amount of times to figure out which you like most. Disclaimer, your skill trees only level up with whatever bar you have active. You have your front bar and your back bar. Skills on your back bar will not gain experience. So generally, it is recommended to have one skill from each tree that you are leveling up. If you are trying to quick level a specific skill tree, then you can put multiple skills on your front bar for that skill tree and you will get twice, three times, or even quadruple the experience for that skill tree. All of this seems rather intimidating, but in all actuality, it is pretty quick to level up skill trees once you get your character to level 50, which even that is pretty quick as I myself have six other alt characters that only took me a few days to put together. Once you hit the level cap of 50, you have your champion point system, which just seems like a never ending way to customize your character skills and stats. At the time of this video, they are upgrading the system to something far better than we currently had in the previous years. The downside to this type of system for the MMO is you have to start another character with another class in order to have access to a variety of classes. Which means yes, starting from the beginning, leveling up those skill trees again, and obtaining skill points for that character. ESO is far less punishing with the spamming X skills and is wildly faster in terms of gameplay with a lot more going on. I'll be using a Magicka Templar as an example here. A popular build for the Templar is the Magicka Templar which focuses on your main spammable skill, Puncturing Sweeps. This skill not only damages your target and surrounding targets, but allows you to restore some health to you. You can imagine why people choose this one a lot as a beginner class. 
for the battle system, you're mainly just casting damage over times, heals over times, and then spamming your main spammable skill. The reason I'm not going to go into more detail here is that this is true for just about every single class in Elder Scrolls Online. You have one main spammable damage over times and heals over times and you're just keeping everything up while spamming your skill and using attacks in between. There are three things that Elder Scroll has that Final Fantasy XIV does not. That is dodge rolling, blocking, and their armor has special effects that help you in battle, like summoning a monster to aid you or creating a healing ring. Obtaining armor like this is considered part of the end game and you can do as soon as you have access to the veteran version of those dungeons. As you can see, the battle systems are really, in my opinion, the exact opposite of each other, which is probably why I enjoy playing both MMOs so much. Comparing the two, neither one are better or worse, it's just preference. Some new players like to do everything on one character, while others wouldn't mind having a main character and nine alt characters. Comment down below on which one you prefer. Next up is my absolute favorite part of an MMO, and that is the crafting system. Final Fantasy's 14 crafting system is a game within a game. To make sure to be clear, you do not have to do crafting in Final Fantasy in order to play the end game battle content. It is completely separated, but just as fulfilling with its own story. A general overview is you have eight crafting jobs and three gathering jobs. Blacksmith, Armorer, Goldsmith, Carpenter, Weaver, Alchemist, Leatherworker, Culinarian. The gathering jobs, botanist, miner, fisher. The great thing about the crafting system is there is no wrong or right time to start doing crafting and gathering. In this game, I actually waited until I was done with the main story content, which was a few months in, and then went back and leveled everything up for my crafting and gathering in one go. To give you an oversimplified explanation of crafting and gathering, this is what it would take to create a maple bow. Your botanist will collect maple logs. Your carpenter will craft maple lumber using those logs. Your botanist will collect moco grass. Your weaver will create hempen yarn. Your carpenter will then create a maple bow by combining maple lumber and hempen yarn through a crafting rotation, making sure you get high quality to make the stats better than a normal quality item. Or you can just buy a maple bow off the market board and not craft anything. This is what I love about Final Fantasy XIV as it lets you make everything from scratch if you wanted to or you can just buy other people's crafting items on the market board that they made and sell. You can also just buy the materials if you don't want to gather the materials yourself. I repeat, you do not have to do any crafting in Final Fantasy XIV if you don't want to. Myself, I absolutely love this portion of the game and I know players who just do end game battle content and nothing else and are extremely happy that way. I myself love doing end game crafting content and that's how I'm very happy playing this game. I like to do everything battle and crafting because I'm a glutton for punishment and I like to immerse myself in my MMOs. Elder Scrolls Online crafting is far less stressful. In Elder Scrolls Online, you do not have to do any crafting either, but it's so easy to do, it's almost silly not to partake in it. You unlock crafting by talking to two NPCs, which will unlock enchanting, clothing, provisioning, which is food, woodworking, blacksmithing, alchemy, and an NPC in the Somerset expansion, which will unlock jewelry crafting. Once unlocked, you don't have to do anything other than level up the crafting skill trees, which is just as simple as deconstructing the appropriate relative gear that you get as drops from your adventures. This gives the skill trees the experience they need and as you level up, use your skill points to unlock passives for crafting. My recommendation 
is unlocking the research passive. The main thing to focus on in ESO crafting is researching your traits as quickly as possible. There are nine traits as a making of this video and you simply find gear or buy gear from guild traders similar to the market board for Final Fantasy 14 with the trait you need, take it to the crafting station and hit research. It destroys the item and you begin researching your first trait. At first, your research timer will be four hours. The next trait will be eight hours, but the very last trait on that item will be 30 days. Yes, you heard me right, 30 days. And that's only if you have the max level passive for research, which will cap it at 30 days. If you do not have that passive unlocked, then it can be up to 50 days. You see why it's important to put skill points into each crafting's research passive first before anything else. This is why it's imperative that you start researching your traits immediately when starting your game. I have a video out on how to set up alternative characters for dailies in Elder Scrolls Online, and that will explain how to unlock crafting ESO and researching the traits. I believe it takes about six months of researching every trait if you are on top of it the whole entire time, maybe even a little longer. Again, super easy to do since you're just clicking a button. Even if you don't want to do any crafting, the reason so many people tell you to research a trait is because if you come across crafting tables in the wild or you join a guild that has crafting tables, it is solely based on how many traits you have researched and nothing else. So that is why researching traits is so important. Once the traits are unlocked, you can craft an unlimited amount of times as long as you have the necessary materials, which are pretty easy to get either from the guild traders or harvesting. There are no special classes for gathering. It's just simply going up to a harvesting node or mining node and collecting the necessary materials from that node. If you are really into crafting, then I would recommend Final Fantasy XIV if you like things simple and to just focus on the battle portion of games, then ESO might be a better option for you. Last but certainly not least is the microtransactions for each MMO. Final Fantasy's microtransactions are mild at best. They offer a MOG station to where everything is located for your transactions. Here is where you can purchase more retainers, do a name change, go over optional items that provide well, all things optional. You can purchase story progression, job progressions, which I do have a video of me purchasing $100 worth of job progressions that I linked above and below, emotes, mounts, glamours, and more. All in all, they are very non-aggressive when it comes to purchasing extra items. You kind of have to seek out purchasing things for the most part and is completely not necessary to play the game. You can simply pay your monthly subscription and never have to spend another dollar. But what fun would that be? Elder Scrolls Online takes an aggressive approach to microtransactions. This is the first thing you see when you log into any character on ESO. They are consistently pushing new deals, the ESO membership, which if you are playing ESO regularly, I do recommend having just for the unlimited crafting storage space amongst the other benefits that they have. There's also other things on the store like houses, dyes, outfits, etc. They are very aggressive and I think they rely on these microtransactions in order to keep the game going. Unlike Final Fantasy XIV, you do not have to have the monthly membership. It is a add-on. If you do have the monthly membership, you do get a monthly stipend of crowns to spend. So technically, you don't need to spend any extra money on top of the subscription that you pay for the membership. But usually requires you to be really patient to get enough crowns to buy the things that you would like. There are only a few items that I would highly recommend buying in ESO's online store, which is the mobile storage banker and the mobile merchant sell items while you're out adventuring and to put things in your bank while you're out adventuring. In my very humble 
opinion as well as experience, I spent far more money in ESO than I ever did in Final Fantasy just for the pure aggression tactics they use and constantly keeping this door in front of you. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing as some of the things they offer are super helpful and improve the game quality. But ultimately, it's up to you on what you want to spend extra on your MMO. I cannot believe we finally made it to the end of that video. For all of you who stuck around this long, comment which MMO that you like to play out of these two or any others. I am really a sucker for a good MMO and I recommend playing both of these at some point. If I earned your subscription, please hit subscribe down below as it really again helps out my growing YouTube channel if you like the content that I'm putting out. Share this with your friends who want to get into MMOs and thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.